Hello everyone and welcome back to another YouTube video. My name is John Hammond, still checking out the Junior CTF or Capture the Flag uh, game and competition that was going on last weekend. Um, so I want to showcase this ROFL, Rolling on Floor Laughing Challenge. Apparently it's a trivial admin task, whatever that means, uh, 400 points. So a few people solved it. Um, and there's a, a GIF, a GIF, or whatever, uh, of uh, the guy rolling around. And... If you, he is actually a link. If you click on him, it leads you to the Base64 uh, Wikipedia article. Um, and we get this included PDF file, which is apparently a bunch of Base64 strings, or a giant Base64 string. Who knows? Uh, let's take a look at it, and, and, and let's download it. So I actually view the source here. Um, I go ahead and I grab the URL for this, because I just want to straight up download it. I think you can. Can you just click on it? Or can you, like, specify a download? Nope, that's a zoom in button. So I guess you would just have to save it, text.pdf, and let's put it in juniors. Let's create a new folder for this one, Raffle. So uh, let's sit over there. CD Raffle. Oh, almost got some Zim Locomotive twice in a row. Damn. All right, so there's the text PDF. Is that an actual PDF file now? Do they, did they just fool me with that? I don't want the viewer, I want the actual URL. Okay, so now let's save this. Let's save this. I just wanted to be sure. Well, let's get rid of the text files. Okay. So, we have this giant PDF, which we want to be able to get the text out of. I'm not going to, like, copy and paste all this, because that would be dumb. Although, it would probably work. Maybe, can I control A? Yeah, and select all just like that. Sweet, maybe that actually isn't too bad of an idea. I had used PDF to text and just scraped out everything out of here. Uh, PDF to T, X, T. And that's get, that gets it all, but it includes the new line characters, which may not be what you want all the time, because it's going page by page. And there are 73 pages, so um, it's dot .text. If you do this, does this include new lines? It does, it looks like. I mean, all of these are new lines. Regardless, we should be able to save this one now. So there's our text, in all in base64. What just happened? Did I just delete it? Cat it. Yeah, I guess I, guess I deleted it. <laughs> what the heck just happened? Okay, whatever. Let's put it back. And we can base64 decode this now. We can... Um, Base64-D, it. But it gives us more Base64, which I'm assuming, if we Base64 decode that, it will give us more Base64. So right now we have, like, recursive Base64. So I try to, like, whip out a small, easy thing to be able to keep track of that. So I created a, like, zero file, and I cat zero, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a while loop or a for loop, actually, because I can do this, like, let's say, 100 times for i in range of 1 to 100. And I can do, let's let a variable um, p equal i, the value of i minus 1. So I, do, I use let so I can do some math and actually subtract 1 from this guy. So p will be the previous thing, and i will be the current file that I'm looking at, because I want to be able to keep decoding again and again and again, but I don't want to overwrite everything that I've done if I append or if I overwrite the file that I'm currently processing and looking at because bash does that sometimes. So we let this new variable and then we can base64 decode um, the uh, previous and we append it to or we uh, redirect it to a new file, the i file. So it's done. And now we have a bunch of files which I can all file if I wanted to. And I get ASCII text, ASCII text, ASCII text all the time until I get this 32 one, which apparently has ISO 8859 text. If you actually cat all of these now, or if you, like you did for I and range, some of them are actually are, are empty, like you saw. Like everything after, almost after 32 is empty, so we know we're at the very end. We can display them all. 0 to 32. 
do cat i done. But again, it's just the recursive base64 until we get to the very end, which is this ISO encoding. See, I googled this for a little bit. Like, what is this thing? But it's just another character set. So, it took a lot of lurking around in the Telegram, like IRC chat conversation channel thing, uh, begging administrators and mods um, and asking, like, what are we supposed to do with this? What is, is this? This is clearly not the flag. This is clearly not the hex bytes for it. Like, if I just hex edit that file, we've got some things here, but these are a unit. There's a specific character set. So, what they tell us eventually is that, oh, we didn't expect, or like, this challenge wasn't intended for any other international players. This was just for a Russian. Because it was a Russian CTF, this was just for, this is not for non-Russian players. So, they didn't expect anyone to actually, like, get this one that was outside of the Russia or whatever they were, they were putting it on for. So, apparently, this ISO 8859 text is Koi, which is another, uh, Koi 8. Which is an 8-bit character encoding designed to cover Russian. So that it, it is it. It's just being interpreted as the ISO 8859 one right now. So we have to convert it from Koi to UTF-8 or something we can actually read. Or, so, or like a real Russian text flag. <laughs> so literally the flag is in Russian. I would not have been able to get in this. I would never have gotten this. Unless they straight up told me this is what I have to do. Which is why they straight up told me this is what I had to do. So again, if I have not yet made my point clear about how much this was a crazy stupid and sometimes really bad CTF and there was a lot of guessing and a lot of weird language barriers, yet again, <laughs> the flag is in Russian. So, okay. Let me explain what I what I did uh, end up solving it and getting it out of the that Koi encoding uh, or OFL. My get flag script uses iconv to force the Koi 8 file into changing the type to UTF-8. So that's the command I ended up running, the convert, convert text from one character encoding to another. So I convert Koi 8 R the 32 file to a new file, the flag dot text, and I can cat that file, and literally this Russian text is your flag. <laughs> I don't know if it actually translates to anything. That's actually an interesting point. Uh, does this translate to anything at all? Huts wonder. <laughs> yeah, whatever that is or means. Um, but literally you would submit this and literally what you would submit and get your points. Um, so peculiar, peculiar challenge, but really cool, uh, the recursive base 64 encoding. Um, I hadn't done that tactic before where I had like a simple while loop previous, uh, number that I can base 64 out of and just crank that out in a, in a, in a while loop. And then I can just see where the offset is and what I hit all the empty, um, files. That way I know, okay, this 32 was the last one in, in Recursive Base 64. So that was kind of cool. So Not too bad of a challenge, although what the heck? Not too bad in the technical sense that I did some cool bash scripting while loops for Recursive Base 64, but why is the flag in Russian? <laughs> Whatever. I realize it's a Russian CTF, and but I was hoping for international players we could still be cool. So... Enough of me jibber-jabbering and, and, and blabbering on. Uh, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope to see you in a later video.